Hello, hello. Um, I'm on a roll. I just recorded 37 minutes of detail about the practical exam for uh, the motorcycle. And now the other video I wanted to make was just an overview of the general process um, because the practical was so much detail I thought I would rather split it. So here's the process that I've gone through to get a Japanese motorcycle license, barring the last step that I will get to in a second. Um, so I went to the license department in, a town, in my town and I made a reservation. Um, you can do it over the phone, but then you need some pretty good Japanese, so I recommend going face to face and even then maybe ask someone to come with you just to be safe. Uh, they asked me if I've been training and a few other things, but basically you're just making a reservation. There are only specific days maybe that they're doing that and you will be number X on your day. Although that might change depending on the size of the bike, the, the Orgat or whatever you're getting. Uh, because they also um, arrange you by size as well as when you would made your reservation. Uh, I have a Japanese... Uh, car license so I was exempted from having to write any written exams but judging from the exam I wrote for the car license when I transferred it uh, it was very simple it was just a basic um, uh, safety check story uh, but if you have to do a written exam I'm sorry I don't know exactly what that was like so maybe look for that elsewhere um, as for the practical exam I've made a separate, separate video for it um, but in general so on the morning, this morning, I went at 8 o'clock to my training school and I had a little warm-up lesson for 25 minutes. Just you know, doing everything I've been doing the whole time, just enjoying that I'm not completely failing at it. Although I did fall off the beam once, um, which was frustrating, but it's because I wasn't focusing. Um, then uh, reception at the uh, department opened up at 9 o'clock, so we get there a bit before 9 um, and you have to pay to do the exam. At this point even, my Japanese wasn't good enough because everyone kept using specific words for the type of exams. And I'm just standing there with a the helmet going, I have a reservation, I want to do my exam, who do I pay any money to? Anyway, they give you some forms you have to fill out. If it's your first time, um, there are more forms. If it's your second time or up, you have less forms to fill out. Um, I needed a photo, I just took it there. I had my friend help fill out the forms for me as well. It was a bit complicated. I'd recommend taking someone with. And even then, unless they know the process, you're probably going to have to be asking someone there. It's a lot of forms. It gets a bit confusing. Well, it's, like, it's three papers. But anyway, um, I paid. Uh, we got the, uh, the forms in. I took a photo. Uh, there was a physical strength check, which was part of the practical video I made. There was the practical exam. Um... And then there was an eye exam in between those as well. And then kind of giddy giddy I got to the course in time to just kind of like walk around for five minutes. Uh, and then the practical exam started. Um, aside from the practical exam though, I had a surprise today. So even though you pass written or are excluded from it and you pass practical, um, first time I might add, I'm very proud of that. Um, the the license is not yours until you have also completed a first aid course so it's about two hours uh, i can do it at my training school and i just have to go make the appointment and do that but until i do that i and i have to give them the certificate that says first aid completed they will not give me a license so i'm happy but i don't actually have a license yet um so a few good things to know um just about the process in general Number one is Japan, and it's also a very bureaucratic department in any country you come from. So be prepared for a bit of a confusing time inside the building. Don't freak out. Just get there early enough so that you don't have to rush through things and feel scared. Um, the written and practical exams are focused primarily on safety. So if you ever face a situation that you don't understand, you don't know what you're doing, what, 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 do the safe choice. Because at, at, le, at minimum you will kind of protect your progress so in the practical exam if you make a mistake but you do a safe story you make a safe decision while doing the mistake you probably don't fail um, you might just get told sorry you have to do this again or do it in a different way or something um, in the written exam if you get a confusing question just think what is the safest choice meaning 
you continue doing what you know other people expect you to do or you just go to a complete stop or you stick to the side of the road or stuff like that. Um, the first aid course is not related to your training and other stuff. So if I had known or maybe if I had properly understood <laughs> um, what the first aid course entailed and how it in, uh, influenced the um, the license I could have done this weeks ago but I didn't so I haven't done it yet so if you can do the first aid course ahead of the time um, or make sure if you even have to but quite likely you have to do it maybe if you did it for your car license in Japan you don't have to do it for your bike one again because I got translated from a foreign license to a local one I did coursework but a, but very little written work and no first aid for my car license um, Go for a few lessons at a training school nearby to the center you're going to write at. They will know the school. Um, even if you're a pro, it's a good idea just to get a feel for what people might expect. And that last form that you have that says, I have completed some training, they stamped at the bottom here saying that they think I'm good enough to pass the exam, does count for something. Um, if the invigilator on the practical day is a bit unsure, mm, yeah, kind of okay. That form might sway them to say, yeah, I think this guy can do it. Compared to like, mm, he didn't go for training. Actually, maybe we should be safer and tell him, sorry, you fail. Um, on the practical day, prepare to be busy from about 8 a.m. until about 1 p.m. So it was on five hours. I had to take an NQ from work. Uh, I'm an English teacher here on the JET program, this whole channel basically. So... Uh, I was back at school a bit before one, uh, but I'm also close to the place I wrote. Um, the course is open to you normally on weekdays from 12 to 1. That's our situation here, but I think in other places as well. So you can go walk the actual exam course for about an hour-ish on weekdays. It's not super convenient. You might have to take a bit of an you again or make a plan, but I highly recommend this. Um, there are normally two routes on the course, and although they almost always stick with option one, they might go for option two on the day you write. Um, if you don't remember the course on the day you're doing the practical exam, it doesn't automatically fail you, but it doesn't look very good. You don't look very prepared, and if you ask too many times, sorry, what am I doing? then they're going to tell you, sorry, you didn't prepare, and uh, you're out. So what I did is I went to the course, and after making sure I understood where exactly you were supposed to go and in what order, I just ran with my phone. <laughs> um, oh, you were the guy that ran the course. Yes, I was that guy. I ran with my phone mostly because I didn't have time, to be honest. You can walk it. Um, just the whole thing from the start as you go, and then I'm going to go here and there, and oh, yeah, I should remember that. Um, and then I took that home and I worked through it again. Uh, that gave me time then to figure out, oh, well, if I go from here to here, should I stick to the right side of the lane or should I go left first and change, you know, to the right again? Should I keep my indicator on? Should I turn it off? Stuff like that. Um, I got a few questions. I asked my instructor at the school that I was training at as well. I got lucky, actually, and on the day I went to run, one of the guys that works there and moves the bikes around for the tests um, we started chatting a little bit and he told me, yeah, watch out, you know, over here, it's better just to stay this side. And I was like, oh, thanks. That's great to know. Um, so I did my homework. I figured out how I will do the exam. And once I figured that out, I spent a little bit of time, maybe it was about three times, fully visualizing the actual course. So I'm starting, oh, uh, I'm stepping up to the bike, whatever. It feels a bit silly, but visualization isn't isn't just for absolute you know pros. Visualization visualization um, can absolutely help you remember and execute better. So I highly recommend that you spend a bit of time thinking about everything you're going to do from start to finish on the practical day, um, and then overall, doing your homework in that way also increases your chances of passing first time or any time which means that you spend less time and less money to actually complete it so putting the time in early will avoid having to put in time later all right that's about 10 minutes and i'm going to keep it short because the next video is super long um but basically just chill out do your homework get there early enough um, and do the first aid course beforehand otherwise you pass and you can't have your license yet like i do which is just silly anyway good luck be safe and enjoy when you get your license.